We're gonna make it work with what we've got, which is very large. Whoops, <laughs> sorry. Did that mess anything up? Hey there, I'm Sola El Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? In this episode, we're gonna try and tap into the power of the Tibetan Sherpas and make one of the Dalai Lama's favorites, Sampa. Sampa is a roasted barley flour that's often eaten in a porridge called cham dur. And we're also gonna make a yak butter tea to go in it and drink alongside it. Both of these dishes can be found in and around a lot of the towns and base camps near Mount Everest and throughout the Himalayas. I don't think I'm ever gonna get close to climbing Mount Everest, but I am excited to try both of these dishes. Now, before we get cooking, we just gotta rearrange things a little bit so we can properly get roasting. Okay. Sampa is super simple. We're just gonna take this barley, which we've already washed and kind of scrubbed gently to loosen up the hulls and toast it in some sand and grind it into a flour. That's it, that's Sampa. Barley originated in the Middle East, but likely diffused to the East along with wheat when the Indo-Europeans arrived around 1500 BCE, maybe even earlier. And it's great for that climate because it can handle growing in that like really arid, extreme condition, condition unlike wheat. So here I've got some sand. Cool, right? I'm gonna heat up the sand and then we're gonna toast the barley in the sand. So this parching technique dries out the seeds and prevents them from germinating so they last longer. Um, we can take these toasted seeds and grind it into sampa right away or hold on to it, you know, for later. I'm preheating my sand. I've never started a recipe where I preheat my sand. I have seen this sit to sand toasting technique when I went to Bangladesh, because they actually toast rice in sand and it puffs up like popcorn, but I've never tried it myself. Okay, we're warm. Let's th throw this in there. And I guess I'm just gonna stir and cook it until it's golden and roasty toasty. Actually, archeologists and scientists, they joined forces to study some remains they found in Western Tibet. And through chemical analysis, they found tea and barley that dates back to 2,100 years ago. So a simple form of sampa has existed for a really long time. Now, sampa is super hardy, portable, and nutritious. So they believe that this is the reason why the Tibetan people were able to migrate into the Himalayas. You know, the Dalai Lama, he wakes up at 5.30 a.m., has a bowl of sampa porridge, and listens to BBC News, which, like, that sounds like a much better way to start the way than I do. Like I wake up at 5.30 a.m. and I just start scrolling on Instagram. So today we're gonna try having the sampa in a porridge called cham dur, which we're gonna make by mixing the dry toasted barley flour with a little tea and a little butter. But they do a lot of other things with sampa. Like you can eat it alone as a snack, but then they also mix it together with a little bit of tea and yak cheese into these little clumps called po. It's called almost like a, power bar, you know, because you're going to get good fat and protein from the cheese. We're going to get carbohydrates from our barley. Keep you going in that high elevation. I was doing some grain research a while ago, like fun, for fun. This is what I like to do on the weekends. And I, I, something occurred to me, I was like, everything is a seed, you know? A grain is a seed, barley's a seed, popcorn, corn kernels are a seed because they have everything they need in them to create another plant. So then I was thinking, are eggs chicken seeds? Kind of? No. It, it's starting to pop, which is pretty cool. Okay. It's gotten a little darker. It's getting a little nutty. And you can hear it. Can you hear that? It's like the original Snap Crackle Pop. Some of them are starting to get a little dark, so I think it's... It is time to sift. Okay, wow, you can tell this is really hot because it's like smoking. And now we're gonna try and sift out this sand. Oh boy. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm losing some. It's fine, we have to sift it a few times. It's gonna take a few tries of sifting to get out all that sand. And you can smell it or you can't smell it. I can smell it. It smells a lot like popcorn, which I think is really cool. 
Popcorn is one of my favorite foods. I have to stop myself. I used to have way too much popcorn, so now it's just for the weekends. But maybe I can have Sampa instead. That did really well after one sip, but I'm gonna sift it through one more time just to make sure all of the sand comes through. That worked out so well. I, I thought there'd be sand clinging to bits, but every single bit seems to have sifted through. So I guess all that's left to turn this into sampa is we're gonna grind it into a flour. Boom. How, was that a natural smell? Mmm, it's not like super hard. You know, when you bite into raw barley, damage. But all right, so now we grind into a flour. So the theme of this show is there's always a mortar and pestle. I've never used a mortar and pestle as much in my life as I have on this show. But actually now at home, I mortar and pestle a lot more. But this is, this is gonna take a minute. A lot of smashing has to happen. We want a nice fine flour so that it's gonna be ready to turn into porridge. So I think, I think it's a good place to bring in gift smash. Oh, okay. It's an upgrade. That, it's an upgrade. <laughs> okay. This is the new and improved model of gift smash. We're not messing around anymore. Let's do it all. work. Okay. Oh, no sample left behind here. This is what powers the Tibetan Sherpas. All right, so now we're gonna make the tea, the yak butter tea. I've got some water and I've got some tea. It starts out just like tea. They would have used a black tea that's native to that region. Today we've got Assam, similar vibes and we're just gonna drop this in and let it boil for a couple of minutes before we add some yak milk. So both yak butter tea and yak milk tea, they have a lot of calories, which is perfect for the Sherpa lifestyle. And we're also gonna add, surprise, salt. This is a salty tea because the salt is gonna help fight dehydration in those extreme conditions. I've been noticing people have been putting butter in their coffee and it turns out that originated with this yak butter tea from the Tibetan people. So um, yeah, we're continuing the traditions in our own ways <laughs> over here in the US. Now that looks really nice and dark. I feel like we're already ready. This feels nicely seeped to me. So I'm gonna turn this off. And here I have some yak milk. Yak milk is pretty high in fat. It's higher in fat than cow milk. So that's gonna help make this really nice and rich. And our kosher salt, surprise. I've never had tea with salt before, so I'm really interested to taste this. And now the very exciting part, we're gonna put this in a churn and churn this up with some yak butter. Well, should we, should we bring out the churn? Gift churn? Here it is. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so the Tibetan people have their own churn specifically for churning this yak butter tea called a changdong. This is not that, this is just a churn, but we're, we're gonna make it work with what we've got which is very large. Whoops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Did that mess everything up? So, this is gonna be fun. This tea already looks like a really nice color because I do, I do appreciate a nice milky tea. So I'm gonna strain this right into the churn. This is a two-handed situation. Oh boy, we got enough tea for the crew happening. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh boy. I've never churned tea. I've never churned anything, but I've always wanted a churn. So if you guys don't need this thing after, I'll make room. <laughs> I'm gonna just uh, try and collect ancient tools that I'll never use. Okay. Here we go. Now we're adding our yak butter and we're gonna churn this up. <laughs> so it has a far way to fall. It's like falling into a well. It's just darkness in there. And then we're just gonna churn this up. Boom. So on their first summit to Everest, Sir Edmund Hillary and Tenzig Norgay said that they drank a lot of weak sugary tea. 
because the altitude made it really hard to eat. Just sugar, power them through to the mountain. From living at such a high altitude for so long, many of the Sherpa people have developed something called a super athlete gene, and it allows them to process oxygen more efficiently. But what's even crazier is that the Sherpa people separated from the Han people only 3,000 years ago. So that makes the development of this super athlete gene one of the fastest evolutionary changes ever. I don't know how long I'm supposed to do this or what's supposed to happen, but I'm guessing what's happening is we're adding fat to water, so we need to create an emulsion, otherwise you're gonna have like a slick of grease on top of your teeth. Sampa is also used in Tibetan celebrations. They throw it in the air for weddings, birthdays, and the Lunar New Year. Can we throw some Sampa in the air later? When it's a wrap? Why the hell not? I feel like we're emulsified. Let's drink this tea. Let's take a look. I don't know, man, that looks pretty good. It's a little bit frothy, nicely emulsified. So let's go taste our butter tea, our sampa, and make a little sampa porridge. All right, so the kitchen is back and it is time to taste. Here, I've got my po cha. It's really nice and frothy from all that churning action. And let's get in there. It's definitely salty, but I'm actually really into it. I thought the salt would be unpleasant, but the tea is so strong and bitter that the salt really balances it out. And then you have so much richness from the yak butter and the yak milk that it really, it really works. Yeah, I'm into that. It's almost like a, it's, it's like really savory. It almost feels more of a, more like a broth than a tea. So I can see how this would be really hearty and filling and help you when you're like climbing up a mountain. Okay, now let's try the Sampa. I'm gonna give it a little taste on its own. Dry. I'm gonna chew for a sec. <laughs> Let me rinse it down. Mm. This is really tasty, it's just like, Roasty, toasty, some of it's not totally broken down, so you get like a nice little crunch. It almost gives me cereal vibes. Um, I think it's really tasty. It goes really well with this, because this is totally bland and unseasoned. Having a little bit of salty, rich tea alongside really works. Now I'm gonna make the chumdor porridge. So I'm gonna take a few spoonfuls of my sampa. Now you can make chumdor, by mixing it with water, milk, but today we're gonna try tea. It's kind of cool because they pretty much just made like a instant porridge situation because it's toasted and ground. This cup is actually a vintage Tibetan wooden cup specifically for Sampa, according to Etsy. <laughs> okay, so I've got my Sampa in there. Let me add a little tea. And I'm gonna add a bit of butter and a little bit more salt. When China invaded Tibet in 1950, Sampa became more important than just a staple food. It was actually a symbol for the revolution because in order to unite this very diverse group of people together, they decided to call themselves Sampa eaters. And it became sort of a rally cry leading up to the Tibetan uprising in 1959. And then once again, it became a symbol of unification in 2008 when the monks revolted against Chinese rule. Okay, let's get, let's get in here. Because the barley flour is toasted and ground already, it like instantly tastes like a long cooked porridge. It's so smart you can really quickly throw together a meal. It's really tasty. Super hearty, comforting. It's like, I think it's better than oatmeal because there's this really nice roasty flavor, you know, from that toasting and sand. I think this is really, really delicious. I love the flavor of the tea, the salt, the butter. I would actually make this, even without having to climb Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. Sorry, so much eating. <laughs> mm, super tea. I'm very surprised for how simple the ingredients are. There's so much flavor. Just because we 
took the time and carefully roasted the barley. I totally get why the Dalai Lama starts his day like this. This is delicious. Just a bowl of comfort. Now, if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe. And as always, hit us up in the comments if there's any ancient or vintage recipe you wanna see me try out. And I will see you next time.